Hello, everyone, and welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are so excited to be here today. Um, good day, everyone, and welcome to this newest edition of Couchbase Ask Me Anything, all right? So my name is Naya Macklin, and I am the developer evangelist for the Americas here at Couchbase. And today is October 18th, 2023, and we have the absolute pleasure of welcoming Gabriel Tarveston, a developer at Lodum. Yay, super exciting. Um, so Gabriel, I'm gonna be asking you a couple different questions today and I hope um, you have um, you have some answers for us. Gabriel, everyone, is one of our Couchbase ambassadors. So we're so thrilled to be interviewing Gabriel today. Thanks, great to be here. Yes, excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay, so I have a couple introductory questions for you. So Gabriel, I always think it's important for our community to really learn about your story, right? Um, how you got to where you are now and your journey into tech. So can you tell us about your story? How did you get started in tech in general? Uh, well, I went to university for uh, to study um, computer science. And while at university, I started um, working in open source projects, started to explore them and try to get some hands-on experience and got into web development this way and full stack web development. Um, I've worked mostly with Spring Boot and Kotlin and uh, in the backend and um, all the databases that you encounter when you do that stuff. And in the front end, I was using Angular for the most part. Um, Couchbase is actually something, it's a, a technology that is rather new for me in the grand scheme of things. I've been mostly working with um, Postgres and MongoDB and Couchbase is, I, I came to Couchbase through um, a later um, journey to Flutter, where I'm uh, currently um, working with um, in my current position. Um, but um, yeah, that's my path into tech. <laughs> Oh, that's super interesting. Okay, so how did you actually, so you said you went to university. Did you major in computer science as well or tech in general? Yes. Perfect. How did you know before before you chose your major that you actually wanted to go into tech versus politics or humanities or anything like that? Um, that's an interesting question. I actually wanted to um, study psychology for the most part, for the longest oh. time. Okay, but, and tell, for the people who don't know what that is, um, give a little summary of what that is. Um, psychology is okay. like the, the um, study of um, the human mind and um, yeah, generally, um, yeah, how people how people's minds work. Perfect. And I, I went to a school that specialized in this kind of direction um, for um, the, for um, the secondary um, education, but I. Um, found um, these online courses that were popping up at the time um, where you could study um, all kinds of topics, including computer science, mm -hmm. um, and get real hands-on experience and found that um, even more interesting than um, what I learned at school in, in, in the direction of psychology, uh, psychology and education. And... Um, decided relatively quickly and uh, after graduating that I wanted to um, go into that direction instead of uh, psychology. That is really, really interesting. Um, Cause I know a lot of folk who, who watch, um, who watch our AMAs, um, they're often interested in, you know, learning about, you know, how did people even stumble upon technology and tech and software engineering as being a field that, that they could even um, take part in, right? Um, not a lot of people have, um, have computer science courses in school. They don't have the ability even to go to school. And so it's really interesting to see how people find computer science. Um, Cause Sometimes, you know, um, people, they have parents or, or people in their lives who mm -hmm. are computer scientists or software engineers. And so that's how they see that it could be a viable option for them as a career path. Um, but other people, right, they just stumble upon it. And it's, it is really, really interesting to learn about your trajectory from psychology, then going into um, uh, software engineering and computer science. So I appreciate you <laughs> diving in a little bit with that. Perfect. Sure. 
Awesome. Okay. So I'd also love to know what are one of the first projects that you built early in your engineering career? So um, that you really love. So either you love that project because of its creativity and its purpose, or because of the challenges that it threw your way while you were building it. So what was, what was one of the first or your favorite projects that you built early in your career? Um, something that was pretty early on, um, I didn't have, I wasn't working professionally, um, in the in the field. Just um, trying to um, just trying stuff out, and I was building a um Firebase client for um for Angular that integrated with Angular and um integrated with the with the concepts that were um. Were you in Angular too? And it was the first um open source library that I um built, and it, it was just incredible um to learn all the the steps that you need uh, to publish a package, to all the documentation, all the testing, all those things that helped me enormously to kind of um learn the tools to build um the software that that I went on to build. Because um, if you if you build something for others, they need to use. Um, you have to be much more um, disciplined with commenting code, with um, documenting it, and that's a skill that helped me in general going forward to to be disciplined in documenting code that isn't public necessarily, just for your team or for yourself, so you can um, understand understand it if you come back to it a few months later or weeks later even. And that was a really great experience, I think, um, to get into open source, to start building things um, in public, get feedback, and um, yeah, you, you learn a, a lot that way. Wow, that really seems like it's like the best, um, you know, preparation for being um, for being an ambassador for Couchbase specifically as well, right? So you're not only an open source contributor, you're an open source maintainer in addition to that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that <That's> is, right. <laughs> oh yes, that's amazing. So I didn't know, you know, everyone, we're, we're talking to the big people today. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations on all your work. Um, so you said this this project was um, built with both Firebase and Angular, and it's um, it's a um, an open source project that that puts those two together. Well, it, it made Angular it made it easier to um, use observables with Firebase, which is kind of an upstream abstraction that was new at the point relatively um, coming to um, JavaScript. But the um, Firebase SDK didn't have um, bindings to it to work well with observables, and observables were kind of everywhere in, Jan in Angular, which is why I built a kind of a wrapper that had um, observable-based APIs around the Firebase SDK. That is incredible. And the work that you've done, you know, building these wrappers, they also, um, building these wrappers and documenting the code, um, that also helped you, you said, become a better developer because now you're you're um, normalizing creating code that's more readable or more easily readable by other engineers. Um, and that's a really, really incredible and important skill to have. Yes, exactly. <laughs> dope, dope, super, super cool. Okay. Um, so I'd also love to know how, okay, so we've talked about your journey into tech, right? We've talked about some of the coolest projects that you've built. Tell me how amongst all of that did you find Couchbase, right? So what intrigued you so much about our community, right? About our offerings and our products that made you want to invest your time into building with Couchbase? Um, well, it's about three years ago that I started to um, look into mobile development and cross-platform development. I was um, a um, full-stack developer working on web project, projects at the time, but I um, was a, bit of, a little bit fed up with the ecosystem in JavaScript where everything changes every few weeks and you have build system, completely new build system every year or something like that. And I um, found that um, Dart, and Flutter are kind of nicely maintained and um, nicely uh, um, put together platform that doesn't change that quickly. 
and um, I wanted to get into uh, mobile development anyways. So that was kind of a, a good fit um, at that point. And it was basically the start of the pandemic. So I had a, a lot more time. Um, and I just started building um, small projects to learn how to use Flutter and Dart. And I, for one of those projects, I needed a database and I wanted to implement um, a few features in the in this um, demo app. For example, full text search and um, data synchronization. And I didn't find any offerings um, in the Flutter, in the Flutter ecosystem or um, in general that combined all those features into one database in in the embedded the database space. Um, except for Couchbase Lite. Um, the <laughs> there were a few um, packages available already for Couchbase Lite um, to integrate it into Flutter and make it usable in the Flutter app, but they were not necessarily fully built out in terms of the API that is available from for the official SDKs. And they used um, the plugin um, system that exists in Flutter, which always is asynchronous, which talks um, through what are called method channels to, sync, to um, communicate be between the Dart code and the native platform code. And um, I saw that there was an alternative option to um, implement a complete SDK for Couchbase Lite that you could use with Flutter and Dart by leveraging the foreign function uh, interface that was uh, um, coming up at the time for um, for Dart that was um, getting ready for general availability. And this allows you to call into C code directly from Dart without having to go through any other channels um, asynchronously. And um, I found that the Couchbase um, Lite uh, team was working on an SDK for C, which perfectly fit um, kind of uh, the approach to uh, use FFI instead of uh, method channels or um, this plugin system. And it also would allow um, to, to develop an SDK that was not just limited to Flutter apps, but could be used with standalone Dart apps because Dart is also um, becoming more and more um, popular for backend development because um, more people learn Flutter, so they know Dart. And if you can share code, that's also nice. Um, so I, I wanted to have this option to use it um, everywhere where you use Dart or where you can use Dart. And that's how I started to build um, an SDK with the goal um, to have an SDK that is feature, um, that's as all the same features that the official SDKs have for Couchbase Lite, just for Dart. And I used the um, Swift SDK the API of the Swift SDK is the blueprint um, to match the Dart um, uh, SDK, the Dart API, and um, with and that took me about a year um, to get ready to a uh, to feature um, to comparable feature set, which is um, uh, where we are now basically. Um, what's missing at the moment is um, the scopes and connection API. That are um, relatively new to Couchbase Lite. It's already implemented. It's it's just not um, available in the general um, in the stable release because uh, documentation is missing, um, and they didn't have the time yet to complete documentation. But um, hopefully, we'll get back to full feature parity soon with the Dart SDK. <laughs> Perfect. So you've been heavily involved in this process and, and probably like doing a lot of leading of the charge in um, developing out the Couchbase Lart, Light Dart, Dart module, right? Yeah, but it, it was just, um, the opportunity was just there to get started with it. Mm -hmm. um, and over the, the time developing it, I found a few bugs and reported them or, or fixed a few bugs myself on the uh, underlying C SDK from Couchbase. Um, but it, it, that's the nice thing about open source that you can just um, take components and build new, new stuff. You don't necessarily have to ask anybody. <laughs> and uh, yeah. <laughs> I love that. 
And for um, for developers who are uh, listening to this AMA, um, how would you say, you know, Couchbase has its own way of, um, of presenting Couchbase light to our community, right? However, I also know that you probably have your own way of presenting Couchbase light or a different way of presenting Couchbase light to the community. Um, and specifically the Dart module that you're creating. So I'm wondering, what would you say um, about Couchbase to someone that is completely unaware of it? And also, what would you say would be the benefits of using the, the um, Couchbase Lite Dart module and SDK? Um, well, it's an embedded database that has a future set that you don't find anywhere else. It's, um, <laughs> you don't need to define as a schema. You can, you have full text search. You have a powerful option to use um, SQL++ to search your data. So you don't have to relearn a completely new search language because it's very similar to SQL. If you know that already, you won't have uh, trouble to adapt to SQL++. You have um, data sync, which is really powerful. And it's a data sync feature that is, um, it's not new, it's it's mature, it's working well. And with that, you have the option to write code that works on five different platforms um, and reuse it on all those platforms. So you can really take advantage of all the work you put into the, the logic around the database. That is powerful. That is really, really powerful. And also, right, like Dart is fairly recent. So what have you yourself been um, doing before building with Dart? Um, before, I was a full stack developer. Um, I was building mostly e-commerce apps and, and other teams which were using the technologies that I mentioned, Spring Boot mostly, yep. and Angular. Um, yeah, it's not, this, those apps weren't necessarily all that interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't think there's much to tell in, in this regard. Right. So what then pulled you to Dart? Um, well, as I said, uh, I was kind of fed up with the ecosystem in, in JavaScript, mm -hmm. where you have to spend ages to, to set, set things up for a project that is getting better with uh, efforts to streamline streamline those those um things but in general there's a lot of configuration you always kind of have to live in the ecosystem of a browser where, browser where apis are sometimes available and sometimes not and that's also the case in, in the mobile space um but with flutter you have a, a with, with that you have a um a platform where a lot of the um the drawing APIs, all of the drawing APIs are consistent and work the same everywhere. So you don't have to think about are these CSS features available for me? Because Flutter ships is, is completely a self-contained renderer. So you can you can rely on what um what is inside of the genre to to reproduce exactly the UI that you um defined during development. Got it. So um, can you describe for us a little bit about, like we've talked a lot about the benefits of using um, Couchbase Lite um, and the uh, Dart SDK, right? Including that now we have data synchronization and, and, and full text search are some of the, some of the huge benefits. And, and there's a feature set that you cannot find anywhere else specifically that you would find in this module. Um, tell us about some of the difficulties that you found while you were building out the SDK and um, building it out with the team um, and doing all of that work. Um, while I was building the SDK, the FFI functionality from Dart was still kind of in flux. Mm. So I had to um, refactor quite a few things, bigger parts of the whole system um, because of changes that were coming down from the Dart SDK. So that was a challenge. And another thing that can be challenging is as a as a maintainer of an app of an S, of an of a of a library like that, is that you get um customers that have problems in the wild somewhere in the app. Um, there's a crash and you get um or well, you get the stack traces most of the time. And you kind of have to you try try to 
um, read something out of those, but it's usually quite hard if you don't have the locks, which is why um, I always tell users if they come with an issue to get their logging set up right, so they have logs that they, they can send me. That's enormously helpful. And as part of the, the overall um, project, the, the Dart SDK project, I've also created a package for Sentry. Um, Sentry is, for those who don't know, a um, logging on, and um, analytics um, platform where you can bug, send um, bug reports from your apps too, so you can collect and analyze what's going wrong in your app. And um, there's, a, there's kind of a plugin system uh, in the Sentry SDK where you can um, extend it to um, monitor more of your app or more components of your app. And I've created a extension for that, for the um, Couchbase Dart SDK. So you get a lot of the benefits um, that you to of um, the monitoring of your, of your Dart component or of your uh, Couchbase component within your app without having to do all the work to to um, push the logs that come out of um, Couchbase into the breadcrumbs that I send with your bug reports. And long-term idea is um, to also make it easy, make it automatic to include Couchbase logs um, in the Sentry bug reports if you enable this extension. But it's, it's actually not that hard to do it yourself. Anyways. <laughs> I know, and I love when when um, devs say, "Oh, you know, it's not that hard. We can just figure it out <laughs> quickly." <laughs> and then it's like this big thing. So hopefully, it's actually not that hard. Um, so that's awesome. Thank you so much, Gabriel. Um, so I would also love to know. So right, we talked about some of the features that Couchbase um, Couchbase Light Dart has, and I would also love to know, right? if I were to be able to whip up a new feature or, you know, if I was a Couchbase genie, okay. Um, and I could grant you any feature wish, wish that you'd have for Couchbase, what one or two features would you love to see implemented in the Couchbase ecosystem? Well, what would be really awesome uh, would be kind of something like um, a completely free tier for the Capella offering to yeah. <laughs> get projects, test projects or just hobby projects set up so you um, can really quickly experience uh, or try out things with Couch, with Couch, with Couchbase Loud Light and with um, data synchronization. That would be really awesome. <laughs> So I'd love because to, now, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> because now you have to figure out how to set up a whole cluster in Docker or maybe on your local machine. Or you, of course you can uh, create a full scale cluster in Capella, but you, you would have to um, pay for it or you have to um, be diligent in, in shutting it down again. So it would be awesome if you had just a really easy option to um, to try out um, the ideas with Couchbase. And I laugh because that has uh, that has been both feedback that, you know, um, we've heard so many times with developers and that I as well, you know, as I've, I was as I was onboarding onto Couchbase, I thought a permanently free tier would be really massive for Couchbase. Mm -hmm. And so I want you to know that we are of like minds, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> as many engineers and devs are for Couchbase. So um, I can't say much about it, but I do want you to know that we are thinking about this heavily and how to do it equitably um, nice. and we're working on it. So uh, keep your keep your eyes out. <laughs> for <project>. I will. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Awesome. All right. Um, so you also mentioned that you're a contributor to Melos as well and other um, open source projects. So can you tell us a little bit about your experience as not just an open source maintainer with Couchbase, but an open source contributor as well? Um, well, Melos is kind of a project I um, came to contribute because of Couchbase, because, of, because I needed a way to um, automate the release process and I wanted to have a nice change log and the way we do it in uh, Couchbase Lite, the Dart SDK is we use conventional commits so every commit has a structure and this allows us to, to automatically generate a change log um, for each release that is 
relatively helpful. And Melos is um, inspired by Learner, which is a JavaScript um, library, which does um, something like that, and was basically um, inspired by Learner to um, and to bring them something similar to, to the Dart ecosystem. And I I started using Melos, but um, had feature requests, something that I would like to have didn't exist, and um, the maintainers of Melos were really great in making it easy to contribute. They had a good setup um, for describing how to get started with contributing. So I kind of um, started contributing relatively um, consistently to, Me to Melos um, at some point. And um, yeah, in the, recently I haven't had the time to um, do as much in, in, at Melos. Uh, which which I would like to change again, but um, it's I think it's really important to have those kinds of um, tools in the ecosystem for Dart, so that it's easy to um, maintain packages, um, and maintain a great ecosystem. So it's I think it's really um, impactful work. <laughs> Yes. All right. I, if you don't know me already, I am a huge, um, uh, a huge positive, like I, I love contributing to open source. And I think that it's really, really important. And it's really, really vital for our tech ecosystem as well. So kudos mm -hmm. to you. Um, it's totally Thanks. okay. <laughs> it's totally okay that you haven't contributed in a in a couple, you know, in a while, and that's okay. Um, you're still, you know, you're still contributing and maintaining and doing all the wonderful work. So, we, you know, you and I will both get back to contributing to open source as soon as we can. So, don't worry about it. Exactly. <laughs> of course. Um, and on that note, right, there's always a lot of commotion around the importance and the vitality of open source, right? So. And, and it's also important that we invest in open source projects, right? So we being both the general public, but also larger corporations, right? Such as Cowspace, it's important that we invest in open source projects as much as possible, whether that be time, right? Effort, money, et cetera. So can you tell us why you believe in open source and why you contribute to open source as much as you can? Uh, well, just a little aside, um, Couchbase has, has been really great in helping to expand the documentation for that and for the <laughs> Couchbase Dart SDK. I didn't uh, do it all by myself. It's it's really um, a team effort um, with um, a few members from, from Couchbase. So thanks for that. And um, well, to the question, I think it's really important to um, to um support open source projects because so much of the infrastructure that um, big companies are using using is uh, open source is maintained by by people who do it in their free time and it's it's a problem if it's if big pro projects are um maintained off the shoulder of a single person or just a few persons because if, if just if if something happens to that one person, it could be a real problem, <laughs> and it doesn't have to be anything dramatic. Just um, life happens, <laughs> and uh, so it's important that um, companies try to um, establish bigger maintainer groups for projects that are really um, at the core of, of a lot of other software. I completely agree with that. Absolutely. And that's also one of the reasons why Couchbase as a company, we have open source projects ourselves as well, right? Um, so we completely, completely do agree that an investment in open source projects is key to our tech ecosystem. So um, so glad that you're also <laughs> on the bandwagon um, for that. So really, really exciting. Okay. So we're going to pivot a little bit, um, and I want to talk about like your your work as a Couchbase ambassador. Um, so for those who don't already know, and I think we we um, we talked about this when right when we started, but so Gabriel is also a Couchbase ambassador, and so I want to know a little bit about like what does being a Couchbase ambassador for you, Gabriel? What does that mean, right? What do you do on your daily on your day to day? It doesn't have to be every day, but like what do you do when you are like doing Couchbase ambassador things and responsibilities? And then also, what's one reason that you continue to come back and use? and build projects on Couchbase? Um, well, 
I try to be active in the forums. That's one um one point um one uh, type of activity that's related to being an ambassador. And um I try to um give talks. Uh, just recently this year, and I gave a talk um at Platterconf in Berlin, in Berlin, where I talked about Couchbase. That's um something that I want to continue in the in the, in the next year and maybe this year even. But um those are the main two um areas where where this is where the activities of uh, of um me as a um ambassador kind of have, have um focused. I love it. And um, what what do you think is the reason why you continue to come back and build with Cashbase? Like, what about Cashbase makes you excited to even be an ambassador? Um, well, I think it's really interesting um, what kind of um, products, what kind of um, areas of uh, the industry are using Cashbase. Um, it's not necessarily... Um, a huge number of companies, but it's really interesting companies that use Couchbase. Really big companies, but also companies that have, have really niche um, requirements for, for their software, like uh, companies that um, produce energy that have to have um, software that is, that is really reliable and works even if there's no internet or um, because they have to maintain infrastructure um, anywhere in the world. Or companies, I know one company is using Couchbase because they um, build software to um, to support builders who um, who build um, houses and uh, other kinds of buildings, and they need reliable software because it's not it's software that is deployed on devices that aren't always in range of um, of internet or stable internet. But Couchbase is also used by really big companies that use their server offerings, um, which just uh, have incredible throughput. Uh, so it's it's just in general, a really interesting platform with a wide range of um, use cases. Yeah, you can really use Couchbase to do so, so, so much. And there's lots of different you know, companies and communities and individuals who are also using Couchbase to build out their projects and dreams. So, um, so glad that you see the flexibility of Couchbase and that you appreciate that as well. So that's huge. So, oh. <laughs> okay. And um, so as a Couchbase ambassador, right, um, you've probably been building projects and it probably, it might be the um, the Dart SDK that you're building out right now, but it could be other projects. Um, but what was your first aha moment when you were trying to build something with Couchbase? What was the thing that got you hooked? You're like, oh, this is really cool. Um, so, and do you have a favorite feature right now? Hmm, um, but I think it's the data synchronization feature, definitely. Yeah. Um, because uh, well, as as part of building um, Couchbase, the Couchbase Lite SDK for Dart, mm -hmm. I also built a um, few little apps that um, use Couchbase Lite not just for synchronizing um, data from time to time, but also use the continuous um, synchronization feature for real time applications. Yeah. And I built a little chat app. I actually um, built this chat app um, in the talk that I held from going from the zero, from, from a completely empty Flutter app to a fully functioning Flutter um, chat app. There's no login or anything like that, but it it's it's an app that can um, be executed on two different devices and they, they can exchange messages and it's all in real time. And wow. it's, it's really, it fits in a, in a few hundred lines of code mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's working really well. <laughs> Huge, huge. And you're using Couchbase as your database, correct? Exactly, as the, as the database and data synchronization layer. Right, that is incredible. And you did this all during a talk? Well, it, I, I had a few snippets prepared, but <laughs> um, I wrote the, the interesting things all um, yeah. like out. Amazing, so, so, so cool. Well, that then... <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, being able to demonstrate that all and demonstrate it live during a live demo during a talk. That's really, really amazing. So you're doing great work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't uh, work without um, hiccups, but I kind of recovered. <laughs> Don't worry. Literally, as we all know, as you know, myself as an engineer and the developer evangelist and yourself as an engineer know, everything is going to have hiccups. Live demos will always have hiccups. Um, yeah. <laughs> just the other day, I did a live demo um, for a hackathon that we're having, and we had just a couple hiccups during the time. Um, <laughs> so it happens and it's expected. So no worries here. <laughs> cool. Okay. Um, so I think we will also do a little bit of pivoting again. And so I'd love to get your opinion. You know, you seem to have worked in the Couchbase ecosystem for a while. Um, you're really deep into the SDK work. Um, what do you think is one of the biggest challenges facing Couchbase today? Hmm, that's an interesting uh, question. Mm -hmm. yeah. What do you think? Of course, take your time. I think... Um, from from my perspective, um, a challenge when talking with people about um, my open source work on Couchbase is that Couchbase doesn't ha yet have the kind of reach, the name doesn't have the same mm -hmm. reach as MongoDB or other big databases. Of course. And it's not necessarily known by as many developers as those technologies, even though it's used by really huge companies mm -hmm. um, which build their whole infrastructure and platforms and on top of Couchbase. Yeah. Um, so I assume it's very well known in those companies, but in, in the general um, bigger um, developer community, it, it's not, it doesn't have the same reach as those uh, other mentioned um, technologies. I think that's a challenge probably and something to improve. <laughs> Excellent point. Yeah, <laughs> don't worry. I know that's something that we're trying to work on. Um, uh, what do you think, like, what's something that we could do to try and get Couchbase's name out there? I'm just, you know, I'm just here with you trying to figure out what can we do to <laughs> let folk know of the incredible features that we have and, and the ways that, that both companies and individuals are, are using Couchbase in ways that were actually really beneficial to, to the projects that are being built. How do we get our name out there? Mm. Or what's one idea that you have? That's a good question. I, I don't really have an answer, I'm afraid. Yeah. I think, I mean, uh, the the um, wish from my side for free um, trials here um, is coming from this um, this perspective that that would probably make it a lot easier for people to um, get into it, try it out. Um, I think the documentation is great. I, I don't really... <laughs> unfortunately I don't really have a good, good answer that is okay that's totally okay and um, for those who don't know as well Couchbase does have a 30 day trial tier for Couchbase Capella um, yes, so you can definitely use Couchbase Capella unlimited for 30 days um, I guess maybe I might, I might not say unlimited because I think there might be some usage limitations but um, <laughs> it's, um, it's well it's, it's, it's enough I think for yeah any, exactly um, exploration yeah. It, that's right. That's right. Um, and then you can also, ex, um, uh, what does it say? Uh, not expand, but extend that 30 days as well, in addition to that. So I, I think not okay, a lot. Of, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, however, I do understand that it's, you know, it's a probably a better um, user experience to not even have to do, you know, extend it or, or know that it's, oh, you know, that it's a 30 day trial. Um, and that, a, a, a you know, a permanent free tier rather than a more temporary free tier would be, um, would be the ideal. So I completely understand where you're coming from on that. Yeah. Love it. Well, I appreciate you um, uh, digging into the biggest challenge and that challenge being that, you know, we don't have a lot of name recognition in the field. Um, we are, you know, we're a smaller company in the way in which, you know, folk don't really know much about us and don't really know the incredible things that we bring to um, uh, both database infrastructure and, and management um, systems and the ways that we benefit a lot of 
um, a lot of projects. However, you know, doing things like this, even Gabriel, is really, really helpful to get our name out there, right? Folks yeah. who want to watch this interview um, are going to learn about the ways that, that you have contributed um, uh, both to Couchbase and also how Couchbase has helped your individual projects. Like, that's massive. So I want to give you a, a quick little thanks for, for coming on to this um, conversation. We're not done yet, but I just want to... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> of course, of course. Okay. Um, so um, I'd also love to know, what are your thoughts on the future of the database um, as a service market, if you have any thoughts there? Um, I think it's um, the developers, especially the developers, are always looking for a database solution that is as minimal um, maintenance burden for them. They don't want to um, provision and deploy their own databases. They just want to have to just want to have a solution that they can um, easily ramp up and ramp down and um, get to working quickly with it. And databases that are offered as a service are exactly that. It's it's more for the the mid and smaller developers or even um, Lotum, which is a relatively small company, but not necessarily a one-man team, we really appreciate that we don't have to um, put all the work, learn all the things that you need to know to, to run a database cluster um, and have all that taken care by um, Couchbase Capella. Yep. Um, yeah, so I think it's it's for for probably the majority of use cases the the, the way to go. I love it. I love it. And I, I completely agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so how how also do you think, and we talked about like um, name recognition being a thing that's hard for Couchbase, but how mm -hmm. do you think Couchbase is also differentiating itself from our competition? <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> just from your perspective well, right um i don't think there is really a database um platform in the sense that the couchbase server is with all those different services that you have you have for storage for querying for full text search but also eventing and mm -hmm. analytics um which allow you to really um build things quicker and with less um with fewer involved parts right. um which is I, I don't think there's anything um comparable in terms of features <laughs> we appreciate you thank you <laughs> we try our best <laughs> <laughs> No, that's really, really great to hear. And I ask that question because I always, you know, try to figure out from devs who use Couchbase, right? Um, other devs, right? Like, why, why have you chosen Couchbase versus all the other, you know, um, all the other DBAS or database as a service products that are out on the market, right? You know, what mm -hmm. draws people into Couchbase? Is it is it um, the the plethora of the different products that we make available? Um, is it the flexibility of those products? Is it the community that we have, right? We're, we're really trying to hone in on what are some of the reasons that people choose Couchbase and, and also just trying to highlight that, right? Like um, it's, it's, it's hard to be a, a, um, a smaller known company in the field. Um, and we're just trying to make sure that we are, you know, giving it our best shot. So mm -hmm. um, I appreciate That's you. Great. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Um, cool, cool, cool. Okay, so we have a couple more minutes and I have a couple more questions for you. Um, great. Awesome. So I'd also love to know, um, what is um what are some of the trends that you're seeing in the software development industry? What are some some really cool trends that you're seeing and that you you're like, oh, that's that's actually something that I might want to, you know, either um take part in or invest in or or what have you? Hmm. Well, AI is definitely a big trend. Yep. <laughs> we um... know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not necessarily something that I want to get into mm -hmm. developing myself. It's interesting to use it, but mm -hmm. it's also very, very, very complex to um, to understand how it works and how to 
um, really start um, contributing in any kind of way mm -hmm. or build things yourself. Um, I what I another um, thing that is kind of um, new or um, that is gaining steam is mm -hmm. the idea of software defined interfaces. So. Mm -hmm. uh, software defined UI where you we have an, an, an part of your app that you can um change without having to de redeploy the whole app. So you mm -hmm. can um you, you define components in your app that you can reconfigure in uh, remotely somehow and um gain more flexibility in that that way. That's that's an interesting uh idea to me. Because in Flutter it's uh it's relatively hard to um to ship a new version from a for a mobile app compared to a web app. Mm. So you have you, because you have to submit everything to the to the app stores and it has to go to re reviews and, and that stuff. Mm, got it. And having the the option to um to ship um changes kind of um on the fly or really quickly, that's interesting. I love that. Okay, so that's really really cool. And what also are some of the challenges that you're seeing within the field, right? Um, so you and I have both been, um, you know, engineers for a number of years, right? So in in your looking back at at the um, both at the ecosystem and your trajectory and your history, what are some of the challenges that you've seen in software development? Um, well, I, I I'm not sure how it will work in the long term this kind of explosion of complexity or um mm -hmm. especially going back to um, to the the criticism or the the annoyance in the javascript framework where everything changes so quickly yes. then oh. it's hard to um to imagine how these systems will work if they are 10 years old or 20 years old things that um don't exist yet really because the industry itself is so young that I'm kind of um, worried how um, the long-term um, maintainability of those things will look in, in terms of decades and not the years um, that these um, systems have been online. Because, I mean, we, we, we see it in banks, which kind of sometimes still use old um, COBOL mainframes and have to maintain them indefinitely. And I'm wondering how the many, many more technologies that exist now will all be um, wrangled in years when when much fewer people know how they work, but they kind of are still running somewhere. Gabriel, that is such an excellent point, right? That is such an excellent point. And, and I'm always thinking about, you're right, right when we think about right legacy code right a lot of engineers come into a to a company and they you know they're so fearful of this massive hundreds of thousands of line code base and it's you know legacy code and it's um it's old it was written 20 30 years ago and <laughs> people are trying to avoid it as much as possible. And they're like, no, don't touch anything because it'll <laughs> break, you know, you'll break something, yes. and it'll take down the whole service. <laughs> that happens exactly. all the time. <laughs> um, and so when we're thinking about the maintainability of these things, and, and you had specifically mentioned about JavaScript and the ecosystem, how it changes so often. That's so true. I found that to be the case as well. Um, and thinking about, like you said, decades from now, like how do we maintain these things as, you know, people, um, decide, oh, you know what, I want to develop in um, in this brand new language that just popped up or brand new framework. Yeah, and exactly. <laughs> yeah, people are no longer investing in those older languages and frameworks, but that's what these projects are built on. So um, that even is probably a startup idea, Gabriel, that you've just come <laughs> up with. <laughs> Some kind of company that is able to wrangle how do you manage your legacy code and um, how do you make your legacy code more flexible to the changes within the industry? Um, that's huge. <laughs> so when you find that out and when you build the company, Gable, you let me know and I will be <laughs> to support you. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so um, one of the last questions that I have for you, um, second to last one is, um, what are you most excited about for the future of Couchbase? 
Hmm. That's interesting. I, that's uh, not, not something that I really have um, thought about actively mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because um, a lot of things are have been happening, a lot of new features, scopes and collections were added and just a lot of other features in the in the Couchbase server. That's good to hear. Um, I, I don't really have an answer. <laughs> that's okay. And that's good to hear because it shows us that like we're not just waiting for a certain point in order to build out these incredible features that'll that'll benefit developers' lives, right? We're constantly doing it, right? We're constantly working on improving our ecosystem and our products. Um, and to hear that for you, that has been the case, that has been your experience where it's like, oh, you know, I thought of a feature and it's currently being implemented. So I no longer have to wish for it in the future. Um, that is really, really helpful knowledge to know. So um, that's good. Like we appreciate you and we appreciate that feedback. And that just tells us we're doing something right. <laughs> so we're going to mm -hmm. keep trying to do that. Beautiful. Okay. So um, uh, second, I said second to last before, but this is actually <laughs> last one um what advice would you give to developers who are new on their journey and who are looking to either contribute to open source or are looking to get to where you are now right what's what's a piece of advice that you would give to them um i mean it's incredible the range of projects that are completely open source mm -hmm. you can start and look at the llvm compiler code or the Dart VM compiler code, really oh. um, complex stuff. And there is virtually no barrier to entrance. If you want, you can um, put in a PR and you will probably get feedback from someone who is really experienced, who you can learn a lot from. So I would say, don't be afraid to, um, to start contributing to open source projects because you, you can learn from people which with who have decades of experience um you should always be respectful with that time and really try to do something helpful and um not contribute um or not um take up their time that most projects have um have a way to find issues that you can work on but that's i think just a great um way to get into um developing real um uh, developing software that is going to be used and we will get a lot of feedback you will have to in most um projects open source projects you will have to write tests and you will learn a lot of good um and um, software development practices wow excellent 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 advice i'm so appreciative gabriel <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, my last question for you before we close things out is that if you could build any project in the world, right? Think of think of all the projects that you've always wanted to build and um, uh, think of something that can make this world better. Um, what project would you build and why? Hmm. <laughs> um... I mean, I don't really have an, an answer to that because um, I don't really, I, I enjoy working on projects that don't necessarily are a product. Mm -hmm. I enjoy working on, on things that are the technical um, challenges and technical, I don't really have a big project that would be really interesting to me. It's more um, working on software that has a nice API that is maintainable, that mm. is kind of well-rounded and um, is nice, easy, nice and easy to use. Mm -hmm. And that's really something that I enjoy. So I don't really have this big um, thing that mm. um, fits, fits the, um, the question better probably, but that's my answer. <laughs> No, that's an incredible answer as well, right? So I can see the value, right, in in you both as a um, 
um, as a developer who's developing, but also like as a person who is taking in software, right? That feeling of trying to make sure that that software is easy to use, right? Is as um, accessible and flexible as possible where you are solving individual people's problems. It might not be this grandiose, you know, project that's gonna solve the world's issues, but it's solving your issues in the moment and how important that is to making developers' lives better every single day. So that, I see that, right? That's huge. <laughs> and that is an answer to this. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Excellent. Well, number one, thank you so, so much, Gabriel. You have been a delight, a joy, so, so brilliant. I appreciate you taking the time to come and chat with me today. <clears throat> and talk about your experiences as a developer, your experience as an open source maintainer for our Couchbase Lite Dart SDK as well, and your experience as a Couchbase ambassador. It has been an absolute joy. And I'm, I hope that we can chat again. Yeah, thanks. I really enjoyed our talk Yay. as well. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Okay, and before we before I let you go, I want to make sure that people um, who want to find you on the internet <laughs> are able to. So, what are some ways that they can find you and, and follow your writings, for example? Um, I'm on GitHub. Um, Blaugold is my username, uh, and I'm I'm also on Medium. I haven't written um, in recent recently really anything, mm -hmm. but I want to get back to that. Um, so probably GitHub is um the best place to, to find what I'm working on. And I think I've also linked um, to other um, platforms from there. Excellent. Excellent. And how do you spell your username as well? So folk who can find you right now. Yeah, it's B-L-A-U and then gold. Perfect. The, the word gold. Love it. Thank you again, Gabriel. It's been a true delight. Can't wait to talk to you again soon. It's been an honor and thank you so much from the Couchbase Developer Relations team, Couchbase SDK team, all of the Couchbase team. We're delighted to have you as an ambassador and we can't wait to have you come chat with us again. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Okay. This was great. <laughs> hey, excellent. All right. I'll talk to you soon, Gabriel. Have a wonderful day. Bye. You too. Bye, friend. <laughs>